all guilty and shit. All right. I want to do get back into this one here, this subject matter, because I... So, uh, the photographs that I was going through last time, in the previous installment, I didn't go look for those. Uh, the truth of the matter is that I actually already had them on my hard drive. I sort of data hoard a little bit. In the event that one day maybe these things aren't readily available, I've got a lot of this stuff saved online, a lot of historical stuff. Like I said, man, I was a history nerd. If anybody would have a hard time biting the bullet on that some of the stuff would be a lie, you know, I'd be up there uh, as one of the least likely, simply due to the fact that to acknowledge that a lot of it's a lie is to in a way acknowledge that so much time and effort was wasted studying this stuff learning about it reading about it on the other hand i don't think it's a bad thing to waste a lot of time looking at like middle earth lore or other you know fantasy or fiction so in that case you know it's comparable to that and that's the way i try to look at it to keep from losing my mind so i found a few more pictures this is a picture of a cannon one of the a few uh, i read about this particular cannon the fact that this particular cannon has a backstory it I think in the mind of a of a liar, this is evidence that it's, uh, see, look, we know so much about this cannon. Why, we know that on the 36th firing of it, it bursts, and the men had to use cold chisels to sort of reshape the barrel. And then it went on to fire another thousand times or so before it was done for good. I don't know who's out there counting each firing of each of these cannons. I find it to be patently ridiculous the amount of trivial tiny little bits of information that every bullet fired in every battle and I, I find that to be so improbable that it reeks of a lie. It reeks of a fiction where you're some omniscient well, author that can just say without a shadow of a doubt this is exactly what happened in which battle and who said what and you know there's too much almost about it. And again, of course, I'm a deeply cynical person, and I already am kind of convinced a lot of it's a lie, so I am looking for it. The main point of these is not to actually disprove the Civil War, but it's could you be shown these pictures and this evidence and proven without or without a doubt, like as in a court of law, that this indeed, in fact, happened exactly the way they said? Or could you look at the pictures and say, well, or this other thing? So these are all allegedly made from bronze, cast from bronze or steel. What is this then? This looks like a concrete with an outer veneer, which is what you would find in the construction of, say, columns. But I don't know if this is a tool used for casting and they're pretending as it was a cannon. I don't know why they're sitting on it unless they're they, they're not pretending like they're riding it and this guy's pushing it. I would hope not because the even no matter what this is made of this would be insanely heavy. I read that they would each horse that they used in the Civil War would could pull 700 pounds and most of the time their life expectancy was about eight months and most of these two-wheeled wagons that they would use to haul the cannons and some of the ammo and some of the other stuff even like two chests of ammunition or gear plus the wagon was an enough to do the minimum six horses and so you know i rarely see horses at all in these pictures first of all and they wouldn't be pulling this one anyway because that's hard to tell from this picture oops but that down there this wheel is designed for a, a track it's hard to show here but there's another picture where it's a little bit more clear so the reason i'm starting here is because could you say for sure this is guys with some cannon or could you say that these are some guys that came across some old construction equipment or ruins and found this piece of machinery and are posing by it this one here these cannons baffled me they've got this little lid here you can see from another angle this is about the diameter of the barrel and all this thickness is metal brass steel they tell us that looks a bit more like concrete to me but it could be metal I don't know. but either way these look like cauldrons to me they don't look like they look like something you would use to heat up make molten you know steel not something that's actually be something shot from i mean usually you need a longer barrel for range for something like this and it looks almost like a concrete mixer or a like i said a steel works thing where they melt metal and cast it. Uh, I don't know. And at this angle behind these dirt embankments, it just looks stupid. Clean clothes, cleaner than you'd expect for being at war. And it just, again, seems like the seven, same seven dudes just posing for shit. Now, the real reason that I was going to jump back into this wasn't for any of this. It was actually because I had determined that amongst all of the stuff that I had already had, like the other pictures, which I tell you were not cherry-picked, I also happened to have these. These are the photographic history of the Civil War in 10 volumes, and I have all 10. And here we have thousands of scenes photographed with text. So if there's ever a any document that could prove to me, show me the photographs that really solidify the truth about this conflict, or at least to verify that things are and events are the way they said they were. I'm not saying that there was no conflict. Let me be clear. I'm saying it didn't happen the way that they are telling. And so in just a cursory looking, looking over this stuff, I found it to be highly suspicious. And maybe you will, maybe you won't. I. I. What's funny is that the, it starts out, this is volume one, it starts out saying that the American Civil War is the 
only great war of which we have an adequate history and photograph. This is the only conflict in the world's history that can be really illustrated with the pictorial record, which is indisputably authentic, vividly illuminating, and the, the final evidence in any question of detail. And yet, it's so lacking. They'd be better to let the pictures do the talking than to reiterate repeatedly as they do how indisputable this is. This is interesting. Here admitting that there's how impossible it is for the average person to get any clear idea of the great struggles which altered the destinies of nations. Indeed. How indeed is it possible? And down here we, it says, there have been of course only two wars since 1865. Not exactly true, but the Franco-Prussian War was for some reason not followed by cameramen. Hmm. And the marvelously expert photographers who flocked to the struggles between Russia and Japan were not giving any chance to make anything like an adequate record. That would be suspicious in its own right. So do any of these photographs show conflict? Well, we get close here. We got this photograph of taken just as the battery was loading to engage with the Confederates. The order, cannoneers to your posts, had just been given and the men running up called to the photographer to hurry his wagon out of the way unless he wished to gain a place for his name in the list of casualties. Sure. And another photograph taken under fire, we're told. This is before Petersburg. Here we have Brady here in the straw hats. Um, does this, does this look like men... These men don't look like they're under fire to me. I mean, it's, it's funny the clarity which with he is standing in re relation to the rest of them. It's like it was centered right here. Get me, let me get me mom posing here. But it almost looks like he's from a different time. <laughs> and he just inserted himself later. That's funny. And I glossed over these. And really, I was sort of disheartened. Here you have a notice in Humphrey's journal describing vividly the records of the flight after Bull Run secured by Brady, the indefatigable Brady. Unfortunately, the unique one in which this the author re reviewed the Bull Run in reverse action is, alas, lost to the world. But we do have the portrait of him three days later. Of course, the portrait survived. The plucky photographer was forced along with the rest, and at night fell he lost his way in the thick woods. He was clad in the linen duster, which was a familiar sight to those who saw him taking his pictures during that campaign. He was unarmed as well, and had nothing with which to defend himself from any of the victorious confederates, until someone handed him a broadsword. This he strapped about his waist, and made his way to Washington three days later. But he came through unscathed, as it was his fate. Then they say here, instances might be multiplied indefinitely, but here is one more evidence of the quality of his pictorial record. Um, that was just an anecdote. There wasn't a pictorial record, unless, they're, and they're calling this right here, in the upper right there. In retreat and advance. What the hell that is? This says two of them are busy with their primitive apparatus just before the second battle. Down here, here they're in a dark room. Really? That's the dark room, huh? This is allegedly a slaughter pen at Gettysburg. I see one guy with a rifle or two. Maybe this guy looks like he's sitting up, if that's even a person. Down here it says, well, the whole tangled and terrible field presented a far more appalling appearance than does the picture which was taken after the wounded were removed. Again, no pictures of combat. No picture has ever been painted to equal this panorama of the very center of the ground over which surged the troops across the plain in the middle distance over the federal breastworks near the crest. It's describing the conflict, but there's no photograph of it. This is where the general died. I mean, is it just me or pictures of the river? Everybody just kind of hanging out. This is the south. I'm not sure why we're taking this picture from so far away, but you have the same sort of deal. Kids, other dudes, just sort of hanging out with pipes in their mouth and hands in their pockets. Very little equipment, no combat, more ridiculousness here as you have, uh, for some reason, all these shells piled up neatly. This is telling us about the cannons have been pummeling this for weeks. Adobe is such ass. The bridge the Confederates burned at Big Black River. Vicksburg taken under fire. Don't really see any fire. Here you have the same nice stacked cannonballs with one guy overlooking a field of battle that's completely empty. The well-defended citadel, it says. That looking just like a pile of wagon wheels and some wooden and one man laboring here and wooden houses surrounded by hills of mud. What am I missing here? Here we have alleged cannons with a little small three to six inch barrel and massive cannonballs nearby along with what looks like weights. Ah yes, one of the many men who left Congress to fight in the war. Of course, uh, this is is allegedly men forced to live like gophers. These little earthen works everywhere. Okay. The first monument at the meeting place. Ah, yes. Is there anything that isn't a staged photo shoot here? This is after uh, Vicksburg took over the Federals, eh? Hmm. It looks uh, a lot different than I would expect it to look. Big buildings back there. Doesn't look very war-torn to me. The Confederacy cut in twain. The caption reads, In the picture, the only remaining warlike signs are the tents on the opposite shore. Uh, I would argue that there's nothing warlike about any of this. Here's the first time we've seen more than one horse 
They do appear to be pulling cannons, but I see no ammunition. I suppose it could be coming behind them. Well planted batteries. I see. These are supposed to be cannonballs attached to a base here, rendering it more like a bullet. What one man could pick up that lead ball? Fortifications before Fort Hudson. I feel like I just doubt everything, sometimes unnecessarily, but I just don't see anything here that says war. Th this, this looks like a fortification against the flood, perhaps. I don't know. The gun that fooled the Federals, a Quaker gun, hewn out of a pine log and a black ring painted around the end face in the river. You didn't paint the whole thing, huh? And it fooled everyone. And this is interesting. The Bastion Fort. In other words, the Star Fort. You wonder if a lot of this is just an elaborate lie to hide remaining, you know, structure. Based on the things I've been reading and the things that I'm looking at, this doesn't look to me... I see doorways and like architecture. I see, but I see barrels covered in like dirt and dust. It, this doesn't, any of this seem to me like war. It seems to me like natural disaster swept through this land, followed by possibly pestilence. What you have is invaders from the north that have been trying to subdue the south for some time and conform to their ways. And there's an uneasy alliance. The south being, I believe at this time, composed of a very mixed race. Uh, Native Americans, blacks who were from, from South America and North America who were, who were here first. I think a very few of them were slaves from Africa, except the ones that north brought because they are the conquerors and the south contained the populations of the more freed peoples that didn't weren't having it didn't want any of the north's ways but they had to justify so they went to war they had to justify this war somehow so they couched it in the terms of like freeing slaves vilifying the south forever and they created a republican party party of freedom anti-slavery party and using the media which they obviously have always controlled they had scouts running ahead of these armies and they were blowing things up all along the way and faking battles for the most part giving the impression of an invading force, and at times there were conflicts, but the winners obviously write the history the way they want, and they're stamping and chasing the last of the free people out of the South to get control over the nation. This is what I, some version of this, I believe. But a lot of the wrecks and the ruins were already there. It already happened. These, there were just some survivors left. Whatever happened, that's why you get talks in these books of oceans of mud, and, and as they're going along, they're taking photographs of stuff, and they're writing the history as they go. And that's why you don't have any conflict. You have these earthen works everywhere that are just fucking weird. Like, who piles up barrels and stuff like this? They just don't look like good forts at all. And these, these captions trying to help sell it really are doing the off opposite. Always a talk of swamps nearby. Here they're talking about this ridiculous plan to dig underneath the fort and plant mines under there. And they got within 17 feet of it. A thousand volunteers were about to do it. And then the Vicksburg had fallen. Their work was useless. Yeah, some fortification here. Gettysburg, no combat. Tent city, no people. Empty fields that they're calling battlefields. Empty towns. The furthest picture away from Gettysburg Address you can imagine. A posed picture by a tree. Here you have some potentially dead people that they're burying. Three of them. Here you have another about 12 people dead here. Although the picture says there are seven distinct rows of dead. <laughs> I mean, they count like 12 people. Tops. All this talk of tens of thousands of men. Now this looks more like a battlefield. Uh, despite the lack of weapons. There's like, again, 12 people spread out here. Well, at least some of them look we're actually dead. But where is the photos of the combat? Here's another five or six people lying around dead. And they're talking about, you know, tens of thousands of men being lost in these battles. Here's another row of four or five with a wagon in the background. And it almost looks like these are people that are just little pockets of people. They're trying to escape or something. Then they're finding them and killing them and spreading them out. Here's another, like, ten people. This guy just happens to be doing the Freemason, you know, hand over arm grabbing the wrist. <laughs> in death, he's, he's still loyal. Now, this one looks definitely like... Like a dying or dead donkey. I'm not sure why they had to write that it's a gun on the carriage. It's a little suspicious. But whatever. At this point, I'm suspicious of anything. Now, this looks like an actual battle. You got a couple dead horses. At least you got a flattened fence. Like, at least this looks like a recent struggle. Wait, does it look like war? No, it looks like a little raid. And this is acting like there are legions of dead. And they, they just show a picture here and there like one guy. Just kind of laying around in the woods. A whole lot of posed pictures, though. Here in this pile of dirt, you have this. What the hell is this doing here? It says it's the entrance to a graveyard. Thousands buried here. Thousands died. 150 cannons just talking constantly about the battle, never showing it. A charging column of 15,000 men. It was magnificent, but every one of Pickett's brigade commanders went down, and their men fell by the hundreds. And a dead horse and a dead horse. That's all we see. This is where he charged. Oh, I see. This is where 15,000 people charged. They fought for three hours. This motherfucker couldn't take one picture. You know, there's 10 books of this. 10 books of stuff like this. The bloodiest battlefield of the war with not a single bit of damage to it or body. Plenty of 
ruins in the background, plenty of old looking ruins, and really it looks as if these people came later to something that happened here already. How about that? And on their flag here, they have a phoenix. The hidden hand is in just about every photograph of these clowns. It is just very highly suspicious. Now ask yourself, is it possible that all this can be faked by like 20 dudes? Yep, just standing around reading the newspaper. Yep, shadowy faces. Oh, here we go again. Looking the other way, looking this way, that way. Photographer just for five years, just perpetually late to the fight. Even when he was already there before. Steamboat, about 20 people on it. One guy to guard these cannons. Again, another 10, 15 people, man. Allegedly a bunch of tents. Looking, honestly, like a flooded city. You know, I actually came here and opened these volumes with a... I thought there was a chance that I would be proven wrong. Federal transport, huh? Taking about seven people. Whoa, that's gonna help. Here they are again. Seem like 10 dudes everywhere sitting on railings and lying on the ground and smoking pipes and like it's a big fucking game. I guess really this was just a really long way of saying <laughs> that I came across that book and none of it checks out. There still is no. Then you got this. These pictures here. And when you're looking critically, it's like a bunch of alleged patients. An amputee in the forefront, allegedly. Too far away to really tell. A bunch of sailors. Guy by a cannon. You know, hidden hand. Hidden hand. There's this uh, photo. Here's a few generals I may have missed from the last time. Hidden hand. Yep, just want to make sure. Still got those light eyes. Light eyes. Hidden hand. Brand new clothes. Light eyes. Creepy as fuck. Light eyes. Yeah. Hidden hand. Same old stuff here. Nothing new here. Just to show you I didn't cherry pick those generals from last time. They all got this shit. Look at this guy. My god. Just to show you that I'm not cherry picking. I, I hadn't seen these. I mean, little liars uh, mirth here, whatever it's called. Yeah. Now, this is the only photograph that looks like there's actually some reality to it. I don't know who they're hanging, but they look young. A couple women. Now, what, what, why ever this is in here, I have no idea, because clearly these guys aren't civil war victims. They're already just skeleton. There you go, he's a tough guy. There's a lot of talk in this book about the faithful blacks staying home with the women and children. Really? They weren't going to take that opportunity to escape, huh? The faithful blacks. They were just going to hang around while their slave master went off to war to keep them enslaved? Yeah, right. Seems like they weren't slaves then. At least some of them. Seems like they are happy where they're at. More of these staged photos. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure this guy. Your typical drummer. Here you go. Hey, guys. Guys, take these rifles and act like you're fighting someone. Oh, monument. Gather around. Put your top hat on. Another stage photo shoot here. That motherfucker's tall. Just stage photo shoot after stage photo shoot. Get for you fishing? The rifle? Yeah. And those clothes. You see what I'm, I mean? Is this making any sense? I don't know. For the most amazingly photographed conflict ever, where it's indisputable evidence, there's pretty much nothing going on here that we haven't seen before. Here's that horrible day when the people took over the Capitol, swarmed the Capitol to hear the president speak, all wearing hats made popular by the president. You know, that whole January 6th thing. Oh, oh wait, oh wait, you mean people just used to bum rush the Capitol all the time? Climbing in the trees and shit? Oh, well, I guess, uh, well, I guess, uh, this must also then be an armed violent insurrection. <sighs> it's a big joke, isn't it, with your hidden hand? Dealers and slaves, huh? Yeah, he's right down the wall, huh? Yeah, none of this looks faked at all. Hidden hand. Here's a guy in front of a fake tapestry. You see what I'm saying? Man, this is all the same. They get a thousand photographs. It's all the same. They're gonna roll this old piece of tubing up here and act like this is what's catching the bullet. Here you go. Guys, push these gravel crushers up here against this embankment at an angle that it couldn't possibly shoot over. And we'll take this picture. Wow, I, there's actually a substantial amount of people in this one. Although no fighting. And here we go again. Perfectly stacked shells. Bunch of dudes posing around the cannon and spot was closed. I'm dismayed that there's literally nothing about this conflict that... Oh, there we go. There's a shot of the cannon opening. Okay. <laughs> that is ridiculous. Here's one that actually looks legitimately... This is the first one that actually looks like dead people after a conflict. I mean, handful, but still. Gotta give props where it's due. This one's pretty gruesome as well, the horses. What could have killed it? I don't know. Where are the soldiers that did this? Not these three guys. Just hanging out in front of these pretty cottages. Just having a smoke. This picture here of the alleged mortar with its circumference. You think those cannonballs can fit inside that? No chance. And when you look a little closer at them, what do you see here? You wouldn't put this on a projectile. I would imagine this might affect the aim and the aerodynamics of it. So what could this be, if not a cannonball? A thought occurred to me. Maybe it's these things. You see the top, just like that, where you screw in the barbell? I'm thinking so. Anyway, just an idea. Makes more sense than the rest of this trash.